friends, today we will discuss about the elementary data structures known as stack and queue. We will first discuss about the stack using array, and then we will know that how we can implement the stack and queue using the link. Other than the fundamental methods to express and analyze the algorithms, we need one last type of thing that is the discussion of the data structure. We need to structure the data in such a way that the algorithm can be carried out efficiently. So, our discussion of this stack and queue, we will continue using the array and linked list of both the cases. Now, the stack is a data structure that has the order of LIFO, that is last seen first out. Now, when we talk about the stack, there is only one entry point and exit point, both is the top. We define the top as we can enter any element into the stack by this top way, and we can pop the element out of the stack on this top way. Now, the top we are entering is the only point that is responsible for all the operation that can happen inside the stack. Now, the stack using the array, we need a simple linear array, say from 0 to n minus 1, to store the n elements in the stack. Now, the stack has got n elements with index 0 to n minus 1, can be viewed as an efficient way to store all the operations that can be performed in a reverse manner. Now, what do you mean by that? is whenever we are performing any recursion algorithm that needs the last operation to be performed first, we use the stack data structure to implement. Now I'll show you an algorithm to how we can implement stack using array. As we will see that there are two operations that we will perform in the stack data structure. One is add, another one is delete. Both will be made at the point known as Stop. So we can initialize this stop as an integer variable, which we will increment and decrement for the operation of addition and deletion of any element into the stack. I will first discuss the algorithm of add to any element on the stack. We can consider this add as a function which will have an argument. That is the item that is need to be added into the stack. Now the addition is also known as pushing an item into the stack. So we will return true if there is a successful addition to the stack. So our first condition will be to check that the stack is empty or full. If the stack is full, then we need to share a message that we cannot enter any item into the stack more because the stack is full. By checking the top point to n minus 1. See, if the index is from 0, we need to stop at n minus 1 for storing n elements. Now, if there are n elements into the stack, the top will be incremented to n minus 1 at max. At max. Now, when we are storing the top to n minus 1, we can store any element below the top. So, if top is greater than or equal to n minus 1, then we will share a message that the top is full or the stack is full. See why we are returning false here because the stack is full and we cannot successfully add one item into the stack. Now, if the stack is not full, then we can add one item to the stock. Now, we will increment the top first and then we will enter the item into the stack. So we are first incrementing the top with 
stock plus one. If our index stock is at zero at position, that means the stack is empty, then stock will be at one and the item will get added to the stack. Now our stack is an array and top is an index. We are accessing the stack top equals to item. That means we are storing the item into the stack on the top index. And we are returning true because we have already added the item successfully into the stack. So that is the add operation to the stack using an array. Now we will discuss about the stack deletion operation. So now we will perform the deletion algorithm. For the deletion algorithm, we know that deletion is also a function and deletion also has the argument item which we want to delete from the stack. Now, just like the addition operation, if the deletion is successful, then we'll return true. Other than that, we will return false. So for the deletion operation, the first condition that we need to check is the stack is empty or not. If the stack is already empty, then we cannot delete any more item from the stack as we have not get any item into the stack. Check that the stack is empty or not, we need the condition that we have described here top is less than zero. So, the minimum index to our stack we have said that it is zero. So, if our index has decremented below zero, that means we have reached the last item into the stack of deletion. No more item can be deleted from the stack. Then we need to share a message that our stack is empty and return false because. No more deletion can be successfully completed. Now, the else part that means if the stack is not empty, then we need to first take the item into a temporary variable or delete the item and then decrement the index stop value. Because the top is not anymore at that position, we have deleted. It is the number less one minus index on that position. So we need to first take the item and then decrement top. This is just as opposite to the addition where we need to first increment the top and then get the item. So here we are storing the item into the variable called item that is the stack array of top index. So the last element into the stack is now stored into the variable item. And now decrementing the top, that means we are not storing any more reference to the value that is being stored to the variable item. Now the top is referencing or indexing at the position that is the minus one of the previous value. So in this way, we can implement the operation addition and deletion of stack using array. Now, one thing that we can note here that we can display that what item that has been deleted into this stack inside this item variable. We can simply just shrink the value of item. That is not important here because we do not want to show that what item is getting deleted because Obviously, the last item into the stack will get deleted from the stack using this deletion operation. So I'll show you with an example the entire stack operation. Then I'll move to the next part that how we can efficiently perform the stack operation using the link case. See here I have made a stack of 0 to n minus 1 
here our n is one two three four five so we will store the items or the data into the stack from zero to four as we have five index five minus one four that is the maximum index of this stack so now say suppose that i will enter the item 14 into the stack so it will come to this zero via this top say our top is the index that we will mention in it so now my top is at n minus 1 and now we are storing the value 14 so as top is not having any value n minus 1 so top will indicate 0 here So now my top positions to zero, which has got 14 as an index. Now we'll enter 23. So according to our addition operation that I have discussed, that first we are checking that top is at n minus one or not. So our top is at zero, which is definitely not n minus one, that is five minus one, four. So the stack is not full. Now we can easily enter the item, just first incrementing the top, that is now our top will position to 1. Now we can enter the item 23 in our stack. Just like this, we can enter any item till n minus 1. So suppose I'm entering two more elements, 13 and 0. So now our stack is positioned to the top till 0, 1, 2, 3. And there is one more position for the addition of data. Now, so suppose we are performing the deletion operation. So first, my stack will get checked that if it is less than 0, that means the stack is empty or not. Definitely, we can see from here that the stack is not empty. So my top is at 3. This is not less than 0. So we can perform the next forward operation so my top is getting decremented and we will first put the item on zero that is the variable item so now zero is being checked into the item variable and my top is getting decremented to two from three Now my top is at 2, not 3, and 0 has been removed as top is not indexing or referencing to the value 0 anymore. So there is no actual deletion from the stack. We have just checked the reference of top from the element 0. Now if we want to enter one more element, then my top will get incremented to the 3 again, not from the starting 0. So in this way, the addition and deletion of the operation can be performed in stack. This can be implemented using the array or linked list both. Now, another way of representing the stack other than this array is the linked list. That means we can represent them using the link. Now, one link is the connection between one node and another. So it should have two parts. One is for holding the data. Another is holding for the connection to the next node. So we can define them as data and link. Now the insertion and deletion operation of stack using the link list is very easy if you compare them with the array. Because for array, we need to first move to all through the stack to get the last element. But for link list, we can just increase the connection from one node to another node to easily reach out to the last node. But it is more complicated than using array. So it is upon the operation or the implementation of stack that where we will use the array and where we will use the link list. So for the link list also, we will discuss the insertion and deletion operation with the basic structure of the link list. Now we have two parts of the node that is a record here. One is the data, another is the link. 
So now we have a variable type type of data and the link is the node form. This is the basic structure of the node itself. That is the type variable data and node variable link. So the node variable active. So the node variable here is actually a pointer which is pointing to the next node. That means the link is getting connected to the next node's link. So it is a pointer variable that we can use it as a link. Here also we have the addition function. The item is the argument to the function because we want to add the item just as the array. Now we are creating the first node as a temporary node with the function new node. Now the new will create a node and make it a temporary node until and unless the temp is getting added to the stack. Now, if the temp is not equals to zero, that means if the temp is equals to zero, there is no such nodes in the stack. That means the stack has not been created. So if temp is not equals to zero or the stack has not been created, then we can create the stack. If the temp exists with some value, then we can add a node to the stack. So we are first storing the item into the data part of the temporary node, and then we will make the link to the next node. Now, what we are pointing to, is the link part is making the connection to the top. That means the temp link is made at the top. So whenever the item is getting added, it is being added to the top only that I have already discussed that anything that needed to be added or deleted from stack is the only way of index top. So we are linking the new node to the top. And on this upon the node that has been previously added will get decremented and the new link is being the first node to the top. As a successful insertion, we are returning true. Now, if the temp is equals to zero, that means we are running out of space. So that is the checking for condition that the stack is full or not. So this is the algorithm add for the linked list stack. Now we will discuss the deletion algorithm for stack using linguists. So as we have already discussed that the checking is same that top equals to zero, that means the stack is empty. So we will check that if the top equals to zero, then the stack is empty and else we will delete the item. Now, just as the array function, we will first pop up the item or the data part of the temp node into the variable item. Now, by the statement temp equals to top, what we are doing here that we are making the top node as temp because we have deleted the top node's value and then we are taking the top into the temporary variable and then make the temporary variable as a top. So we can, in this way, delete the top node and make the temporary node as the top node. See what we 
doing here, we are first taking the top in the temp variable and then the top we are making the next node to the top. That means the top link is now the top and we are deleting the temp. That means we are deleting the previous top element. So this is a very easy way to implement the stack and the deletion operation on the stack using the linkers. Now we will move to our next part of discussion that is Q. Now just like the stack, Q is also a data structure just with the opposite order of stack and that is known as PK. First thing, first time. You can consider that you are waiting in a queue in any kind of ticket session. Whoever is the first one to come will get up first. That means there are two points to this operation. One is the rear end and another is the front end. That any entry into the queue that will happen from the rear end and any entry to the service is happen at the front end. So we need to take care of two variables here, rear and front. And all the checking to the stack full condition will be made at the rear end and the stack empty condition will happen at the front end. Because if all the services are been prompted, then we will be at the front equal to zero. And if the skew is full, then the rear will be equal to n minus one. So this is simply, so this is simply more like the stack, just with some modifications in here and two variables rather than one top in the stack. So first I will show that how we can implement the queue using array. Now, as you can see here that the insert function, we are first having the int add item. That means that is the item needs to be added. Now, if rear equals to max minus one, that means n minus one, the queue overflow, that means the queue is already full. Now, if it is not, and the front is equals to minus one, that means the front is already at a negative one, we need to make the front at zero. Because if the front is getting served at the previous one, then the front should be in the minus one. We need to make the front into zero, that is front equals to zero. And now we can insert the element into the queue. Now we are scanning the item here, then we are incrementing the rear position. And now we are storing the add item into the rear position of this queue element. So this is pretty easy and same like this insertion into the stack, just we are having the rear increment here and making the front equal to zero. Now we will see that how we can do that deletion operation into the queue. Now here with the delete operation into the queue, we are first checking that if the front is equals to minus one, that means there is no more item to get served or deleted or the front is greater than rear. That means the front is now being attached to the rear, there when there are no more elements into the queue. So the queue underflow, that means the queue is empty. Other than that, we are deleting the element that is the queue array from. As I have told you previously that whenever we are deleting or serving an element from the queue, that is to be made to the pointer index front, there is no operation on the rear for the deletion. Now we are incrementing the front, that means we are actually getting the front closer to the rear. So in this way, we can delete and serve each element one by one till we are reaching the rear. So this is the delete operation from Q using the array. Now we will perform that how we can do using the linked list on the insertion and deletion of Q. As you can see here that to discuss the insertion and deletion operation of linked list, we first need to struct the linked list. So we are naming here Q node the linked list. That is the data part of integer variable and the Q node itself as a self-reference or pointer next. Now we are creating a constructor that is an algorithm to define and initialize the values of data and next. We are defining and initializing the data with D that the item needs to be deleted or added to the linked list or queue. And the next is equal to null because the top element, or if there is only one node to the queue, the next part will be null. 
So that is the initialization. We will change it accordingly to the insertion and deletion. Now the structure is we are having two nodes, front and rear, because we have a front data, front next, and rear data, rear next. And we are initializing both this data to now and having an empty queue. Now we will perform the insertion and deletion operation on this queue. So this is the end queue or the insertion operation. We are inserting the element x or the value x inside this queue. So first we are creating the new node that is a temporary node and with the data value x here. And if the queue is empty, then the new node is the front and rear both because there are no more nodes. Now if rear equals to null and front equals to rear equals to 10, that means there, if there is no more item into the rear point, then the 10 will be the first node and the only node to the queue. That means previously the queue was empty and my temp is the first node that the both front and rear are indexing to. And if it is had got and if it has got more elements into the queue, then we are creating only the rear next equals to 10. That means the temp is created with the data value x. And now we are making the connection of next, that is the rear point of next to 10. Now temp is getting attached to the end of this queue and front is not indexing to temp anymore. So this is the insertion operation. Now we will do the deletion operation. So now DQ is the deletion operation from Q. So if the queue is empty, then we are returning null. And how can we define that the queue is empty? We are checking that the front is equals to null or not. So if there are no more item into the queue, then the front should index to null. Now, if it has got some element, then we are move the front one note ahead, and then we are losing the index or reference to the previous front. We are now storing the temp, the front. That means the front data value or the entire front node is getting stored to the temp. And we are now making the next front. That means the next node that was linked to front as the new front. Now, if front becomes null, then we are changing the rear also to null. So if front equals to null, then we are changing rear equals to null because there are no more elements. And we are deleting the temp to permanently delete the value that was previously stored at the index front. So that is the deletion operation of linkage. Now we will discuss one more operation or data structure that is a slight variation of the link list using the queue. So this is a circular queue. So a circular queue has got one more additional property that is the rear and the front both can be touched with one another. That means the front can move to the rear position and the rear can move to the front position if there are zero to n minus one elements inside this front. So this was the basic properties of stack in Q and how we can use them using the array and linkages implementation. We can use the stack in Q in many of the operations in programming languages. And in our daily life also, we have seen many applications of stack in Q. So thank you for watching this video and stay tuned with us.